Skeptics Review, The Bible, by John Smith. Ruth and Esther, Part 2. So, Xerxes' anger had subsided, and he remembered Queen Vashti, because apparently, poor baby didn't have a queen to show off to anyone anymore. Even though he had a vast harem, a king still needs a queen, though, to make him sandwiches or something. It is the Bronze Age, after all. His servants told the king to get a bunch of virgins to replace Vashti, so they rounded up every virgin, brought them to the palace, and stuck them in his harem. Haggai the eunuch made sure they passed the purity test for the king. And no, it wasn't one of those 500 question purity tests that all start with, have you ever? It was a purity test to make sure that these women were still virgins because a king needs virgins. So in the citadel, there was a man named Mordecai, a Jew who was from the tribe of Benjamin. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, who was also called Esther. Esther was very beautiful. Mordecai raised her like a daughter or at the very least he treated her like a daughter how they treated daughters in the Bronze Age. Since she was a virgin, and since Xerxes had made a command to bring him virgins, she was packed up and sent to the royal palace, and more specifically, to the king's harem. I guess the eunuch Haggai was so impressed with Esther that he gave her the best food and beauty treatments, which entailed oil of myrrh and basal massages. Hey, I'll take those. Esther was given seven young servant girls of her very own. I would have preferred seven young servant men. Hell does have its perks after all. Esther didn't tell anyone that she was a Jew. Mordecai had warned her not to. So Esther remained in the first harem. He has a first harem? Ugh. Esther remained in the first harem until Xerxes called for her. Then, she apparently graduated to a second harem. How many harems does one man really need? More than one, apparently. Esther got to wear whatever she wanted when she was sent to the king, though. Of course, a good submissive woman in the Bronze Age acceded to a man on this. Well, maybe not in this case, since Haggai is just a eunuch. I guess... Esther pleased the king, good enough that he made her queen. He still had at least two distinct harems, though. Men. Meanwhile, Mordecai overheard two palace eunuchs plotting to assassinate the king. Mordecai uncovered the plot, and the two eunuchs were hanged on the gallows. Xerxes had this event and all involved written down in the official records. Around the same time, Xerxes promoted an ambitious man named Haman. Haman was an Agagite. You remember how God wanted to eliminate all of the Amalekites? King Agag was the one old King Saul captured in battle and Samuel eventually killed. So, bad blood being what it is, Mordecai would not bow down to Haman, and this made Haman furious. Haman planned not only to exact revenge on Mordecai, but on all of the Jews. He wanted to kill each and every Jew in Persia. What did I tell you? Bronze Age. Haman had lots cast, which is called Purim, to determine the day and month to have all of the Jews killed. He decided it was the 13th day in the 12th month of Adar. Then. Haman went to convince the king that it was good to slaughter all of the Jews because they were different, of course, and we can't have diversity in the realm. Xerxes gave Haman his ring to stamp the proclamation with. Xerxes had two harems to occupy his time. He didn't care a jot for official documents or the wholesale slaughter of an entire people. The proclamation was taken to every land, written in every language, of all of the people under the king's rule. Because writing proclamations and stamping them 
is such hard work. Dudes, so a former porn star wore a colander for a driver's license picture. Way to go, Agent Carrera. Also, I guess Crazy State decided that Looney Tunes is really a founding father of the United States, or democracy in general or something. That's right. Lord Yahweh told me to free the Israelites from their slavery in Egypt. G-Man sure did. And then he told you to tell the Israelites they could have slaves. And he told you how to treat them. And whether they were Israelite slaves or just silly foreigners, how to treat them differently. Plus, somewhere in that Exodus book, didn't you battle the Amalekites or something? What's G-Man's deal with those guys anyway? Lord Yahweh said to kill them all. It appears he missed a few, since all this time later, his book still talks about him here in Esther. Well, that's all for today, folks. See you later.